good morning, Columbia. We sure have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, time to roll up our sleeves, and, and gosh, uh, maybe it would help if we had the Galaxy boys with us. Hello, Houston. Thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, the, my uh, very favorite song from my childhood, and actually uh, I uh, find this song to the launch pad with my uh, crew members. Thank you, Houston. And to Cal, it's our pleasure. Good morning. This is Mission Control Houston. As we heard there, uh, there just a moment ago, the this morning's wake-up call uh, in honor of uh, Mission Specialist Takao Doi, uh, who is from Japan. The uh, song uh, Ginga Shunin Tai, uh, which stands for Galaxy Boys, is actually a popular uh, puppet show that aired on uh, Japanese television uh, some years ago. The uh, show as Takao Doi mentioned uh, one of his favorites in his childhood, and that is the uh, music from that uh, popular television show, uh, which stands for the Galaxy Boys, a science fiction uh, puppet show. Calvin was in the airlock this time. And Kevin, that's what we're seeing. Great to be with you uh, down in the airlock or up in the airlock. This is Mission Control Houston. This uh, view shows a uh, mission specialist to Cal Doy and Winston Scott as they finish up checkouts of their spacesuits that they'll wear on a spacewalk currently planned for Monday. All of that checkout uh, going very well so far. Uh, no problems reported by the crew members. Doy and Scott uh, will spend another uh, couple of hours uh, doing uh, EVA preparations, spacewalk preparations, uh, going through the procedures here to restow the gear in the airlock and uh, prepare the airlock before that spacewalk. And also then uh, going through the tools that they'll use and uh, making other preparations uh, to have those in order ready for the spacewalk on Monday. Go ahead, KC. Yes, if you can give us uh, no later than no earlier than time for sample four, we'd appreciate. <laughs> KC, uh, if you can make it. It, by putting it into uh, heat no later than one hour, 53 minutes, we can do it on this pass. Otherwise, we need to wait for the next pass, and that is no earlier than two hours, 21 minutes, and no later than two hours. Yeah, unless we can do that, uh, we will uh, aim to start heating at uh, 150 or thereabouts, definitely earlier than 153, then. Okay, that'll be great. We can get two of them in on this pass.
Columbia Houston, we really appreciate the airlock video. We'll let you get on with your work at this point. Columbia Houston on air to ground two. television from Colombia showing uh, payload specialist Leonid Kodnyuk as he works with the collaborative Ukrainian experiment. Kodnyuk uh, is a Ukrainian payload specialist uh, flying on board the shuttle, the first Ukrainian to uh, fly on board the space shuttle. The collaborative Ukrainian experiment is a plant growth experiment uh, that studies uh, 10 different plant growth experiments that will operate uh, during Columbia's 16 days in space. In conjunction uh, with the uh, plants and uh, pollination of plants um, that is being done on board uh, Columbia in the experiment, uh, students are also participating by performing similar experiments on Earth, both in the U.S. and in the Ukraine. The experiment studies the effects of weightlessness on uh, plant growth in general and uh, specifically on uh, pollination of uh, various plants and weightlessness. And we see the happy birthday. That mark, that birthday greeting was for my little S1, Carolyn. Copy, we'll make sure that uh, she hears about that. Thanks, happy birthday, Lenny. Uh, we mentioned just a few moments ago that there are two ways to retrieve the Spartan satellite, the most dangerous being the spacewalk and retrieving it by hand. Who can speak to how dangerous it is and why? Um, I actually uh, think that we've got two very good ways of retrieving the, the satellite. Of course, uh, we've got the robotic arm, and we've done that several times. We also have retrieved uh, Several, not several, a few satellites by hand. Um, we plan these out very well in advance. Uh, we did the Intelsat rescue a couple of years ago, and I think we'll be quite successful in capturing the Spartan a couple of days from now. Which of you actually will be uh, positioned on board uh, the arm, the robot arm, and then uh, ferried out, if you will, to the Spartan satellite to try to grab it? Will that be Winston Scott? Uh, using the arm is certainly one option, but I think the option we're leaning towards is uh, to Cal Doy and myself being positioned on the left and right sides of the Spartan Impis. The Impis is the mounting structure that the Spartan will fit into. Uh, we're thinking that that's going to be the best position for us. So we'll both uh, station ourselves on each side of the, uh, the Impis, and we'll fly the, uh, the space shuttle up to Spartan. We'll analyze its rates, and if it looks like it's slow enough and safe enough to do, the cow and I will uh, grab it. I'd like to add that we have a lot of people taking a look at this. We've got astronauts on the ground who are practicing or testing this scenario in our neutral, neutral buoyancy lab. We have folks looking at it in the uh, virtual reality laboratory. So we're taking a good, long, hard look at this uh, event before we put it into action. I, I feel, uh, feel pretty confident that we can pull it off and pull it off safely. Mr. Scott, we've been told that the satellite is spinning. Is it spinning at an incredibly fast rate, or is it just a slow spin, slow enough that you could reach out and grab it? No, the satellite is actually spinning at a relatively slow rate. We are downlink some video of the satellite, and we had the folks on the ground look at it, and it's less than two degrees per second, and it's mostly about one axis. And those things are really, really good news to us, because if indeed that is the case, then uh, Takao and I will be able to grab the satellite, and we shouldn't have any trouble with it. Scott Lindsay, let me ask you this question. How far away are you now from the Spartan satellite, and how close will you have to get to retrieve it? And is the danger of a collision like uh, we saw with the Russian space station Mir a possibility here? Uh, by the way, the, uh, the name is Steve, not Scott. But uh, in fact, uh, right now we're about 40 miles away from the Spartan satellite.
satellite. Uh, as far as the rendezvous that we're going to do with it, it's a standard rendezvous that we've practiced many, many times, and we've, in fact, done in the shuttle many, many times. So there uh, certainly is no danger within the rendezvous. The last uh, portion of the rendezvous, when we get close to the satellite, is a very controlled and well-known and well-rehearsed and well-practiced maneuver, one we've done in the sim many, many times. In fact, the uh, rendezvous we'll be doing uh, on a satellite in a few days here is is not much different than what we were originally planning to do with it anyway. So uh, it's there's there's not danger involved, and, and you really can't compare the two. They're different systems. Stephen, my apologies. There are too many Scots on board the Space Shuttle Columbia. Tell me about some of the other experiments, though, that are planned during this mission. Uh, we have a lot of experiments uh, in the payload bay, and most of them deal with material sciences, some exciting crystal growth experiments, and some where we are trying to do measurements to an incredible accuracy. For example, an experiment from Stanford called CHEX yesterday measured the temperature of helium to a billionth of a degree Kelvin, and all of that has, of course, a lot of applications, for example, in nanotechnology and GPS and so on. Inside the mid-deck, we have a glove box, and we have uh, three experiments, and we've been doing one so far. Uh, we've done uh, five sample runs of this material science experiment where we are measuring or studying the vetting characteristics of two different uh, liquids which are immiscible, and the principal investigators uh, tell us that they are very excited to see the results so far. Commander Kriegel, a question from Lee Barker in Lower Hutt, New Zealand. When going in and out of orbit, do you have to uh, be aware of other traffic such as telecommunication satellites and space junk that may be dropping out of orbit? Believe it or not, we do have folks uh, looking and making sure that we stay away from other satellites or space debris. Uh, and that's tracked uh, by uh, the Air Force at NORAD in Colorado Springs. And they keep us uh, well away from any kind of uh, debris or any other kind of traffic. Okay, real quickly, Doi Song, Nihon no Minasan ni Nihongo de message on Egashimas. First in Japanese and then in English. Nihon Doi Tango de Suchu Kara Konnichiwa, Watashi Sochi Zain, Isho Kenme, Uchu de Gamba Tatai Timas. Nihon Yoshiku. Real quickly, uh, Dr. Chawla, any. Hello, um, everybody. We are working uh, very hard in space and uh, also having fun watching uh, the Earth and uh, playing uh, in a microgravity condition. Well, wish we had more time. Columbia, thank you all very much for taking time from your busy schedule. Have a successful mission and a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you.